Well, greetings and salutations, uh, test takers. Uh, this is Dean Tenney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in the fabulous Las Vegas with our Tuesday. We're back on our normal Tuesday rotation uh, since I'll uh, be back on the grid for the next uh, three, four or five weeks. Uh, tell us what series exam you're taking and where you're joining us from. Uh, and that's kind of fun to see how far afield some of our folks are uh, coming from. Uh, we always start doing a little uh, housekeeping. Let's get the housekeeping done. Uh, if you are an SIE exam test taker, uh, I am currently working my way through a SIE exam podcast series. Uh, we have already put the first episode up, which was an intro to the SIE exam, and the next episode, we're going to be recording live on October 4th, and we'll be covering equity security. So feel free uh, to join us if you're an SIE test taker and bring any questions, excuse me, bring any questions you may have uh, about equity securities. Uh, Kaplan uh, contracts with me to uh, teach Guru Exam Prep LLC, which is me, to teach uh, classes for him. I'm just finishing up a 66 class. So uh, we got one more day tomorrow. So I'm pretty tired this evening. So I apologize in advance if my energy level isn't quite what it usually is. And if you're taking a 65, I had somebody ask about uh, value propositions. And I told him that the best value proposition, he's taking a 65, is four-day class with me next week. Because, you know, tutoring is $225 an hour. So the cheapest way to access, you know, uh, content would be through that class. Uh, for all of the Kaplan uh, products and services, uh, there's a 15% discount code available at checkout. So at checkout, if you're buying a Kaplan product service, put in Guru 15, and you will get a 15% discount. Uh, Test Geek, uh, Brian is on a flight tonight. He's usually my wingman, but he's on a flight. But uh, Brian Lee is the managing member of Test Geek Exam Prep LLC, and he's been kind enough to give our viewers a 20% discount on his products, and so that discount code is GURU20. If you have a question, the main point of our evening live streams is to provide you with access to content. If you have a content question about any exam, as well as, you know, fun and fellowship, but mainly uh, content, uh, just put that in the chat. It's helpful to me if you tell me what exam you're taking. Because, you know, uh, some of the content is testable in various different exams, but the depth of which it's testable can vary substantially from exam to exam. So tell me like SIE, what your question is, or S7, or S6, or 63, or 65, or whatever that may be. Uh, this uh, is available as a uh, podcast after the episode that you can find on Spotify if you want to listen to this in your car or your workout or whatever you want to do. In terms of using the channel, I have lots of content. There's 625 videos. So the easiest way to access content on the channel is find your series playlist. You go to the playlist or your podcast, whatever it is, you find your series like SIE, and there'll be three playlists available for you. Those playlists are in suggested watch order as well as the videos. So uh, that would be, I think, if you're interested in a particular topic, then I would use the channel search bar. And so if you're interested in intrinsic value, for example, or crude interest, you put that in the channel search bar, enter, enter, uh, put enter, and all our content will become available. Uh, we uh, end each of our live streams with a free coaching call. I got Georgie. I don't know if Georgie was here, but we did his. He was taking the 63 today, so hopefully we'll get a positive update. Uh, based on his performance in the coaching call, I'd be awful surprised if he didn't make his mark today. Uh, but we, uh, I don't want to have contingent floating liabilities. So if you win, it's Thursday, September 25th, 1 p.m. I send you the invite, the Zoom invite. You claim it with one hour, it is recorded, it is shared with the rest of the channel. You can share it, you can assign it to someone else. Uh, Alexis, if you're here, I sent you a Zoom link for the coaching call you wanted to assign to others, but I didn't see anybody there when I showed up, so I don't know what happened, but I'm more than happy to send you another link and try that again if you happen to be listening. Okay, let's see what we got in the comments. Hello all, right on. Pick six. Hey, your Saints look pretty good. Derek Carr, our former Raider, uh, got it done last night for you guys. That's good to know. I, nice guy. You know, the problem with the Davis family is they they treat people so shabbily. So, you know, at least it looks like Derek found a good home. Oh, you're in Little Rock. I thought that uh, looked like New Orleans Saints there. 
Oh, maybe that's a what the LSU Tigers and uh I'll ask my Marcel friend. He's a uh, Louisiana person. He'll know exactly what that's about. Taking the 66, Max, on Saturday from Ohio. We're on our second day of the 66, uh, the Kaplan class. And uh, we were talking today uh, about types of accounts. Uh, we talked about disclosures. The two biggest areas, Mac, on your 66 are disclosures. That's 11 questions. And on ethical business practice, that's 14 questions, Max. So that's the 25 questions that we worked on in class today. So make sure you pay attention. One of the challenges on both 65 and 66 is there's a lot of twosies, threesies. There's not a, a huge uh, honey hole where you can get a lot of points. And so on both 65 and 66, one of those honey holes where you can get lots of points is uh, disclosure on unethical business practices. Ashley, Series 7 for Orlando, Florida. All right. Uh, how is it doing? I hope I you know for I like Florida. I get why people would like to live in Florida, but boy, it's I can't handle humidity, you know. Uh, by the way, Florida isn't as bad as some place. I've been in Houston where it was 100 degrees and raining. I can't can't handle that. Uh, Jacob, I'm scheduled to take my 65 Friday, scoring 105, 114 correct on uh, Kaplan Cubank should be fine. Uh, I would say stay the course, rinse and repeat, Jacob. I mean, those are good scores. I'm reading that collectly correctly, right? You got a 105, you got 105 correct answers out of 114. Uh, that bodes well for, uh, you know, your uh, success of making your mark. So uh, what you're doing is working. I would continue to do it. Make sure Thursday you get a good night's rest, particularly a nice NAS exam. So 63, 65, 66, those exams are giant reading tests. And I don't know about you, Jacob, but when I'm tired, my reading skills are greatly diminished. And you really got to read carefully. You know, today, for example, you got to be real careful. Are they asking you about a broker dealer, an agent of a broker dealer, not as testable as an investment advisory firm? Are they asking about an investment advisor rep? Are they asking you about a federally covered investment advisor or a state covered investment advisor? So, you know, really got to know the cast of characters there. But it sounds like you're in good track based on that score. Uh, well, there is no Brian Nathan. I'm on my own today. So that's why you're getting the overview uh, dual camera set up here in the studio and uh, fabulous like Las Vegas. Uh, Brian is on a flight uh, back from Philadelphia to Seattle. So uh, missing uh, Brian today. Uh, well, if you're using Pass Perfect, I, Nathan, keep talking about forming a Pass Perfect support group uh, for people using Pass Perfect. I would tell you it's better to have too much than not enough. And so, Nathan, you should feel really good if you're getting upper, upper 70s on Pass Perfect. Because boy, they you know they do it intentionally, by the way. But boy, they they really take you in the woods and back. I mean, they have some very obtuse kind of questions, particularly as it relates to like margin. You know, uh, I've had Nathan. Some firms that use Pass Perfect won't let their reps move on to like Unit Eleven until they've done Unit Ten. And I've literally had people pay me to tutor them to do the Pass Perfect questions so they could move on to the next unit. Uh, one of them you can find is a tutoring replay, and it's called Hellacious Margin Questions. <laughs> where this Pat Perfect student and I spent an hour doing past perfect margin questions. I do warn you that it's a waste of your time as it relates to the actual exam because you're not going to see hellacious margin questions, but oh well. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Uh, Jeff, uh, no surprise. I wasn't surprised, Jeff, that you passed your SIE and your 63. So uh, good to go. Time to put those registrations to work. Make some money. Uh, Marcel always uh, says to say hi to mom. She always likes to hear that because uh, Marcel was kind enough to take mom and I to a very beautiful steak dinner here in uh, Las Vegas when he was out. And so uh, mom's always saying, how is Marcel? I said, he's doing very well. Uh, he's working on getting that exam. Next time you're out to Las Vegas, that's uh, on mom and I in terms of uh, dinner. 53, boy, Evan, wow. 53 is a muni bond principle. <laughs> you know of it in my career, that is the exam that I came closest to failing, uh, hubris. I said, what can they ask Dean about a muni bond that Dean doesn't know? Well, that's a bad test-taking attitude. And then I sent away for some prep materials, and they sent me this little flaky kind of a book, and I thought, well, flaky book, flaky test. It never dawned on me that somebody might sell me study materials that are not adequate to the task at hand. And boy, on that 53, I was using all my test taking tricks, man. You know, Sesame Street trick, reduction to the ridiculous, 
too long to be wrong. And uh, I passed it in those days. I don't know if it still is, but it was a 70 in those days. I got the perfect score, 70. Woo! <laughs> so lots of minutia on that 53. Uh, so much minutia that the poor people supervising 529s were getting so blown away that they came out with a new exam. Uh, I don't uh, know of any supplements for the 53. Uh, one of the things I think would be helpful is EMMA. Uh, that's the elect uh, Electronic Municipal Market Access. And one of the things the MSRB does is publish their actual rules. They have A rules, administrative rules. They have D rules, definitional rules. And they have G rules, general rules. And what I would suggest, Evan, is getting uh, uh, the test specifications and I actually would look up uh, those particularly definitions because, wow, you know, they are really, really uh, in the weeds on those definitions. So that's one thing I would suggest as supplementing. I don't think Kaplan anymore offers 53 study materials. Uh, I think STC does. I don't know if Notman does. If Notman offers it, I would suggest Notman. And uh, the, my 10% discount code at uh, Notman is Guru10. Uh, they do a pretty good job. And uh, Solomon has recently sold out to uh, to Pass Perfect, but I did use uh, their 53 material. Kind of funny, uh, Jeremy. I bought the materials because I was tutoring somebody on 53, and I thought, well, I better see what their what their study materials. And uh, I guess I had some name recognition. Jeremy is on the Goes, are you tutoring somebody? We just saw you ordered some of our materials. Like I am. <laughs> he was okay with it. But uh, check out Solomon. I don't know what you're using, but uh, check out Solomon. Uh, tuning in from Connecticut. Thanks for joining us from LinkedIn. We uh, broadcast to LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and I guess uh, Twitter X now, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, our primary platform is YouTube, uh, but uh, we really are getting some traction on LinkedIn and Facebook. I had somebody so Dean, I thought you hate Facebook. I said, I do. And they said, well, what are you doing here? I said, well, if test takers are on Facebook and that's where they want help, then I'll show up on Facebook <laughs> so, or LinkedIn. Recently passed the 66. That's wonderful. A big shout out to Dean and Brian. There you go. Uh, I'm glad that you made it and uh, you can now use those registrations, right? Start making some money. Thanks for, uh, I always love it. I love, thank you so much, Alex, for popping in too. I really love it when uh, victorious test takers take the time to pop back in to the Tuesday community live stream. You know, because I think it's helpful for morale, right? You get to see people passing and, you know, uh, the same on the YouTube channel. If you go in the video description, sometimes uh, that's can use, uh, give you a little moral boost if you need it. Uh, so thanks for popping by and uh, uh, sharing your victories with us. Uh, can I explain uh, Form ADV? Well, it's not as big a deal on 63, Jackie, as it is uh, for 65, 66. But we have to register our, our an investment advisory firm. Let me make a note, 1309, Form ADV. You know what I do, uh, Jackie, is I link to uh, videos in the uh, replay where you can find a more you know thorough explanation about this. Um, one of my popular videos I'll probably link to is Who's Your Daddy? And so we're either going to register our uh, investment advisory firm with either the SEC or the state administrator, never both, never both. And the way we do that is by using Form ADV. So we fill out Form ADV. There's two parts. There's part one and test question. Part one is about the firm. You know, how are we organized? How do we conduct business? That kind of thing. And more importantly is Form 2, Form, Form ADV Part 2, which serves as a disclosure document to uh, prospective investors. Uh, 2A is about our firm, our investment advisory firm, and 2B is about our personnel, our human capital. And we're going to use Form ADV Part 2 as a brochure. Now, on 65, 66, that's huge. On 65, you're going to get more questions about registering broker-dealers and agents of broker-dealers than you're going to get about registration of investment advisors and investment advisor representatives. Because with a 63, you're just representing the broker-dealer. Broker-dealers register the same way. They register using what's called Form BD. And though that's very testable, Jackie. A broker-dealer has to register with any state in which it has an office, period, full stop. It doesn't matter what kind of clients I have. 
So my firm was called Gamma Global Investments. That was my broker dealer. I have an office in Leesburg, Virginia. I have an office in San Francisco, California. I have to register that broker dealer in both Virginia and California, regardless of the type of clients I have. Uh, I have no office in New York and I do a lot of business in New York. Do I have to register the broker dealer in New York? I do not. New York says, Dean, why are you as an agent not registered in New York? And why is your broker dealer not registered? I say, because I have no office in New York and I don't have any retail customers. All my customers in New York are institutional customers. So, you know, Jackie, one time at the bar, the guy said, hey, why don't I open an account and have you manage my money? I said, well, don't make it personal. But the answer is no, I don't want a retail client in New York because if I have one retail client, I'm going to have to register the broker dealer and I'm going to have to register myself as an agent of the broker dealer. So you're going to get more on that side of the 63. Now, you don't get a lot of performance opportunities on the 63. So make sure you do all your practice questions. You want to really practice, drill, and rehearse those practice questions. I don't know who your test prep vendor is. But Kaplan is very good. The subject matter expert at Kaplan is a guy named Chuck Lowenstein, and he is really into NASA. Um, NASA is the North American Securities Administrator Association. I not so much. <laughs> you know? um, I hope that was helpful for you. And I will link to a, uh, a video that has a lengthier discussion of that. But Form ADV is how we register an investment advisor with either the state or the SEC, never both. There's two parts to that Form ADV. Part one, which is the, about the firm. Part two, which is about uh, the brochure that makes disclosures to customers. We use Form ADV Part Two as a brochure. Yeah, Jeff. Well, you know, thank you so much, Jeff, for saying so. Uh, we try and add value, and you know, uh, in Jeff's case, I don't think he was at risk. And in Jeff's case, if you're using tutoring of myself or Brian, uh, you know, I would think in Jeff's case it was more like an insurance policy. Uh, but, you know, uh, you can either use the tutoring as an insurance policy or you can use tutoring what you call what I call plug the gap. If you have any kind of a gap that you're worried about, well, then that tutoring might be a Bob, I don't solicit tutor in the channel I, I, to do tutoring. And I, you know, the channel has two and a half million views and 23,000 subscribers. And I apologize, but I really don't have time to be following up people who want me to you know, beg them to get tutoring. It's like, you know, there's tutoring replays, there's reviews. You can, you know, you think it's you need it. It's available. But. You know, literally this morning, I had five people just want to talk about tutoring. And, you know, I don't want to talk about tutoring, either tutor, tutor or don't tutor. That is the question. There you go. Uh, Metairie, is that on the uh, west part of Louisiana? I think. Why does that sound familiar? I think I've been there, actually. Hey, is this? Uh, oh, this is a different Gigi. Uh, I have a Gigi in my class today. So this is uh, she's doing so well. And uh, I told her I think she's going to pass based on her participation in class. And I thought maybe she joined us tonight. So this is a different GG because the GG in class is doing her 66. Right on. So I think it's so great, GG, to go 1 and 0, get that first testing victory under your belt, and then uh, go in strong for the seven. I always tell people on the SIE, you want to overlearn that SIE. You don't want to just barely pass the SIE, you want to kick its butt because that's going to lay a nice foundation for going on to your seven or a six top off, whatever the case may be. So uh, I wish we still gave scores. We don't, because I think you deserve to know, you know, what your score was in terms of mastery of the content. And that would be particularly helpful if you were going on to another exam to say, okay, well, gee, I need to shore this up here a little bit, or, you know, I killed it. And so I should feel pretty good running into going into my seven. Uh, I call when you get the seven done, Gigi, you're typically going to do a 63 or 66. And then you get all those testing victories. I always tease people. I call that the test taking registration hat trick, right? You get all three of them. You go three and out. And that's the way to go. Three and out. I'm using, uh, Max says, I'm using Kaplan for the 66. And in the past week, I've been taking two tests a day. Wow. That's a little much. Uh, I mean, you know, is, that your, is your fake accountability partner, Max? Fake meaning I can't hire or fire Max, but I would prefer to have one a day with a remediation in between because that second score sometimes becomes unreliable. So you were getting seven to 73. Well, that's all great. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I think you're ready for your test. Uh, your test is Saturday. This is Tuesday. So uh, maybe give yourself a day off. You don't want to wear yourself out before you test. It's like a, an athletic event. And with those scores, I think you can take Wednesday off, come back Thursday, do another practice scores. And as long as it's in that range, you should be fine. 
And as I've said, right, that would be what? So Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday, you got to make sure you get a good night's rest. Right. So uh, maybe do one. You can do another one if you want Wednesday. You're going to do what you do. It's a buffet. Take what you like, leave what you don't. But I'm not a big fan of piling practice tests upon practice test upon practice test. You know, I had a guy who told me he did four in a day. And I go, that's a total waste of your time. That fourth one, you can't tell me that you're, it's going to be a score we can rely on. What we're worried about, Max, doesn't look like we have that problem with you. So good, good news. Kudos to you. But what I get worried about is when somebody does like four of them, that last score, what we're trying to do is get a mark and that last score is not reliable, right? So we want to have reliable kind of marks of where you're at. Uh, Nicole's taking the Series 7. Hey, how are you? Au revoir. I like that. I, I hope I'm not messing up that. I think you told me I got it right last time. I think that's kind of cool. Hora Var. Hora Var. I think I get that right. I uh, hope all is well with you too, my friend. Always glad to have you on the live stream. Uh, thank you. Past SIE. All right. I'm so happy, Nicole, that we are getting so many SIE testing victories. Uh, we have two complete SIE playlists. One is full of lectures. And, you know, I don't check my you know popularity of my videos every now and again. You know, I do. And I, I popped in. I couldn't believe it. Our most popular video is an SIE video with like 80,000 something views. So crazy. And so then I have a second playlist that has a practice tests and practice questions for you. And I'm making a new playlist now, which is podcasts. And again, Nicole, I'm just so glad that people are now matriculating through the channel. We have people who have been with us on the channel for their SIE, their seven, and then their 66, 63. I always joke, Nicole, I come into your life for a reason and a season, right? The reason is to pass your exams and the season is how long it takes you. Uh, Nicole, I get all kinds of people. Not well, I shouldn't take that back. Every once in a while. I got it. I, this happened again this week. The guy says, Dean, I love your content, but I hate the advertising. And I said, Well, you know, I hate the advertising too. And so I pay Google 20 bucks, YouTube 20 bucks a month, not to have to deal with the ads. So it's an ad-free experience for 20 bucks a month. I said, How long is it going to take you to pass your test? Let's say you're taking your SIE, you're taking your seven, uh, you're taking your 66. So maybe that's six months. So six months times 20 bucks, 120 bucks, and you don't have to watch the commercials. Yeah, you know, and by the way, I still think the content is a good value because again, tutoring is $225 an hour. So, you know, and anyways, it goes, well, you know, I'll suffer. <laughs> they always, I don't know why people say they'll suffer. You know, I've had two, more than one person tell me they're going to suffer. I'm like, well, listen, you're pretty blessed. If suffering is that you have to watch advertisements on YouTube, life is pretty good. Because there's other people that are struggling. Cynthia, I owe you a coaching call. So let's get that done. I tried to reach out to you the other day. So uh, you have my email and I owe you that coaching call. I cleaned up Giorgio. I cleaned up Alexa. So you're the last outstanding coaching call out there. So uh, please send me an email. We'll get that done. Yeah, I think Nopman is a fantastic provider. Uh, Nopman, Brian Marks, they do a great, great job. Um, you know, they're kind of white glove service, so to speak. And uh, th sometimes they overcomplicate things, but, uh, Brian Marks did a, um, uh, a video series on the 79 that was fantastic. Uh, so it's not been Marks, uh, not been as retired and Brian Marks is over there. Uh, a lot of bright men and women, uh, good friends of mine. Um, you know, sometimes they hint like, Hey Dean, what, how about joining the not? They don't have offer me anything, but, uh, they give me permission to put some of their content on the channel. I have a Notman. SIE exam, they gave me permission to put on the channel, and I got a Notman 57, and I got a Notman uh, SIE Series 6. Uh, but anyways, uh, I, I'm, I'm just not straight-laced enough. They're more kind of suit and tie kind of people, and <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Marcel. It looks like a Saints with a Tiger logo on it, right? Inside the map of Louisiana. That was what kind of thing. There's pick six again, right? And yeah, so I think you got it right. I mean, he'll tell us if you did. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Boom. In the Kaplan book, uh, this is uh, from Logan. My good, what, what are you holding there, Logan? Is that a dinosaur or something? What is that? It looks. Oh, it's a turtle. It looks like it's a turtle. Gee whiz, where'd you find that thing? Just in your front yard, it looks like? Uh, in the Kaplan book, it says that there is a content update page for rules that might have changed since the publishing of the book. But I can't find this through my dashboard. You know where it is. Well, uh, Logan, I would ask what exam you're taking because sometimes there isn't any updates since the edition was published, which means there would be nothing there. 
uh, or, you know, uh, the, the is nothing there because there's nothing to update on. That would be my guess. So uh, tell me what exam it is that you're taking and what edition you're using. But it should be there. If there's updates, they're on the dashboard. It's usually in the same when you hit the, the you log in, it shows you like, do you want the QBank? Do you want this? Do you want the, the videos on demand? And there's a section there where it says updates. So my guess is if you can't find it, it's there's no updates. But uh, put in the chat what exam you're taking. I'll tell you where there are, there are updates. Uh, any specific content a lot of your students miss on the 65, I should be aware of. Uh, Jacob, I think there's a lot of hubris on the 65. But I think the 65 is very, very difficult, particularly if you don't have any kind of background in the securities industry. So um, uh, score range have been between a 105 and 114. Oh, that's good. Well, that's still good. I, I still think that's that will get it done. Uh, but, you know, I don't like putting out negative energy, but uh, most people miss their mark on the 65. Uh, surprisingly, it's the investment content. Uh, I will link uh, at 2554, Jacob. Uh, I will link to a podcast series that Brian and I both did on the 65, and people have found it very, very helpful. It's uh, I think it's five or six episodes on the series 65, and we address in each section of the 65 what are things that people struggle with and what's worth learning and what's not worth learning in terms of making editorial decisions. So if you check back on the replay at 2554, I will link uh, to that podcast, and you can watch those. Uh, while you're at the gym or when you're in the car or whatever. Live a little rock, little rock. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You got a side hustle with the cards. I like it. Uh, failed the nine last week of the 65. Do I have any videos that will help you with function two? I do want to have a series nine playlist. I've been meaning to add to it, but check out what's there. And then uh, tell me what you would want some help. There's a great debrief one. Are you part of our Reddit community? Uh, we have a Reddit R series 24 one, and it's for nine tens and 24s. And somebody just put up a wonderful debrief on the nine. It's anonymous. And I'm glad it's anonymous because, you know, uh, I don't know how long it'll be up there one and every draw is a little different, but check that out. I meant to, you know, bring it over here because I usually start with debriefs, so I'm pretty busy today. Uh, but check that out, check that out and then see what you think. Uh, send me an email. Uh, do you have my email one? It's uh, Dean, the Series 7 Guru at uh, gmail.com. There it is. I just put it on the screen for you. Uh, check that out. Send me an email. See how that uh, matches up with what your experience was. And uh, maybe we can come up with some ideas besides the content I already have in the channel for you. So I'm more than happy to kind of uh, uh, do that. You're watching from Leesburg, Virginia. Wow, what a small world. That's where I had my, uh, my other office in Leesburg, Virginia. And... Um, you know, uh, what's that restaurant? It's a, it was right there. I used to eat lunch there all the time. So uh, Leesburg is becoming quite the suburb of, uh, you know, uh, Washington. Boom, boom, boom. So, yeah, Juan, reach out uh, after you watch that uh, and see what you think. Uh, struggling with bonds? Well, that's uh, definitely something you need. They, if there were truth in labeling, Nicole, we wouldn't call it the stockbroker's test. <laughs> If there were truth and labeling, we would call it the bond broker's test. There are way more questions on bonds on Series 7 than there are, you know, other things, particularly if we throw muni bonds in there, right? So uh, I will link at uh, 2843 uh, to a uh, two lectures on bonds. I have one on uh, corporate bonds. It's a uh, Ford bond, not James Bond. And I also have one on muni bonds. And I'll link that maybe you'll find that helpful. Uh, if you uh, can uh, articulate a little more in the chat, any particular problem you have with uh, bonds, I'd be more than happy to address it tonight in the in the live stream. Erica, one of my all-time favorite students, man. Talk about a grinder. Talk about a worker. Erica, man, is that. She works so hard. She was so dedicated, disciplined, and organized. And boy, if anybody deserves a testing victory, it's somebody like Erica who just uh, keeps grinding away and is resilient in the face of negative feedback. You got to remember that negative feedback is part of the process. So you got to miss lots of practice questions, right? So, you know, if you call me and say, Dean, I missed 200 practice questions today, I go, great, let's try and miss 300 tomorrow. <laughs> so Erica, good to see you. I hope you're uh, using your registrations. 
and uh, making a lot of money or uh, you have a blessing from uh, all that work you did. And uh, like I say, thanks for stopping by. You'll always be one of my favorites. Uh, Eric is also responsible for me now having a uh, email address that isn't my personal address and having a phone number that isn't my personal phone number. So <laughs> uh, failed the seven last week. Damn, damn. Uh, well, hopefully uh, that misfortune, you didn't miss too much, Molly, uh, by too much. Uh, I'm going to link uh, to on 3022 in the replay, a video called You Failed, Is It Over? Uh, spoiler alert, the answer is no. And what I offer you is uh, five steps on how to respond uh, to that misfortune. It sounds like you're already on the right track, working hard to pass the next month. I love it. You know, when you miss the mark, when you go back to your sponsoring broker dealer, they, that's what they want to hear. You know, they don't want to hear woe is me and, you know, you blame past perfect or Kaplan or, you know, it's surprising to me, but it, we get more whiners on the principal exams than we get on the entry level exams. People who are, you know, making excuses about, you know, rather than just kicking butt next time. So uh, I too, Molly, uh, think you will pass. And I, uh, I would be interested how you found the channel. I, uh, I regret when people don't find the channel, soon enough i had a guy today and he said uh he found the channel about uh, two weeks ago and he said he thinks it really made the difference so i hope i mean it's very gratifying when it does they don't do the 53 okay well um yeah maybe check solomon again uh, solomon i think has a 53 i'm pretty sure uh low 80s on most capital that's fine uh do you think i need to buy and do the master i do not logan i think low 80s is fine so um, yeah, I mean, if you want to have some insurance, uh, if you have resources as a test taker, it is not a time to be frugal. So if you actually have the resources and you feel something would make you feel uh, more confident or give you some insurance, then by all means, buy, buy whatever. But uh, is it necessary? I don't think so. I don't think so. There you go. So you're done. Usually, Ryan, I think it would be done. Usually the 66 is the last leg of the testing journey. So hopefully that was your last testing victory. And now you can unsubscribe to the channel. I'm joking. <laughs> you know, I, I've had people say, hey, Dean, uh, thank you so much. I passed my last uh, leg of my testing journey. So I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> oh, well, well. And then I have other people who say, Dean, I'm not going to unsubscribe, even though I have uh, kind of done with my exams. That I told you, Gay, what a small world. What a small world. Uh, using Notman Marks, like I say, fine provider. They, by the way, if you're using Nopman, they use the Kaplan QBank for some of their stuff. They have their own, uh, you know, supplements that they use in conjunction with the Kaplan QBank. Uh, they don't use the Kaplan QBank for like the SIE. Uh, but the, well, the reason I bring that up is if you have a question, I help you with any question from any vendor. But if it's a Kaplan question, it's easier for me to help you because you can just send me the QID. That's that number in that right hand corner. And I can actually see what you're looking at. Yeah, STC is a fine provider. I think STC, uh, you know, is uh, one of the uh, good providers there. I don't think you're at risk if you have STC, Past Perfect, Kaplan, Notman. You know, I get a little worried if you're using like Exam FX or, you know, AD Banker. They're a little thin. And in that case, maybe you want to make sure you got a supplement. Oh, they are right next to each other. All right. Well, there we go. You guys are neighbors. Love it. Man. Yeah, I think maybe I drove through it, right, to get to the uh, that country club that's there. Uh, during the first try, they had ladder bonds as a choice for suitability. Kaplan really doesn't mention them. Can you uh, give a brief example of it? I sure can. So, you know, uh, if I buy you, let's say you have $100 million, and I buy you one block of 20-year bonds, you know, and interest rates go up, you know, you're going to get crunched. Because, you know, the bonds are going to go down and the long-term bonds are going to be more volatile. And, uh, you know, that wouldn't matter if you plan on holding them to maturity. But what I would do instead, Stephanie, is say, you know what I want to do, Stephanie, is I want to create for you a laddered bond portfolio. I want to have uh, bonds coming due at different maturity dates. I want to have some bonds coming due in the next three years, the next seven years, next nine years, 11 years, 12 years, a laddered maturity. And that way, Stephanie... If interest rates go up, we always have bonds coming due in the near future that can we can reinvest at today's rate. So the test question is a ladder bond portfolio is a way to deal with a rising interest rate environment. 
And so that would be why you would buy our created a laddered bond portfolio. So you always have bonds coming due, you know, that you can reinvest at whatever today's higher rate is. So that's what a ladder bond portfolio. So suitability would be for somebody who's uh, worried about rising interest rates. I uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, debrief on Series 10. Uh, I haven't, Eli, had any debrief on Series 10 lately. I told you we had a hell of a debrief on the Series 9, but I haven't had anything on uh, 10 here lately. Uh, 10 is a real slog. Do you think 30 days is enough time to retest? I do. Well, working full time. I just got that part, Molly. Uh, I, I want you to have a date and I want you to have a retest date you're comfortable with. I guess I would ask, uh, now that I know you're working full time, you know, how many study blocks do you have each day? Do you have uh, time to, uh, you know, take two 45 minute study blocks, one in the morning, one in the evening for a total of an hour and a half a day? Or do you have, you know, uh, two one and a half hour study blocks? What can you do on the weekend? So I, I think you're going to have to put the pedal to the metal, but I do think it still can be done. But you're going to have to be really conscious of uh, time. And then the other thing Molly makes it difficult is, you know, I hope you don't have any energy energy vampires in your life, but it's hard if you're working full time and then you have a bad day at work. And then, you know, maybe I had a single mom. Can you imagine this? And she's uh, studying before she gets the kids off to work at like 4 a.m. Then she's working and she's coming home. Good news, she passed and I got so I guess I would say it depends on how many distractions you have from the full-time job and other things. It looks like you got a good dog in your life. That always helps. What is he? Uh, what is that? Uh, Golden Retriever? Uh, he's a beautiful looking dog. Uh, Golden Retrievers are pretty smart, but they require, you know, a lot of uh, interaction. <laughs> I had a Labrador and oh my God, he was a great dog, but man, he was such a pain. It's a silent, the J is silent. Or of our, or of our, I hope again, I'm trying to do it right. So, uh, so the J is silent. Or of our, sounds like our Marine. Oorah. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. I'll, what I'll do, uh, I'll go online and I'm sure there's probably somewhere I can put that in and uh, Google will uh, give me the verbal version. Yeah, I think that's the case. Exactly. And then as I said, Eli, she could have all the time management, discipline, and consistency and, and it's still difficult just because of other things. You know, there's, I get it, man. Not everybody's life revolves around completely taking this test. I mean, that's great. If you're in that situation, you know, some baby brokers get four months with pay to just pass the test. And listen, you can imagine that if I'm getting four months with pay and the only thing I'm supposed to do is pass the test, that you can imagine those firms are going to be less forgiving, you know, if you miss your mark. There you go. Uh, I'll, I'll open that up to the uh, to the uh, lions, the crowd, Molly. Uh, what do you guys say to Molly about any tips? Uh, this is the last exam she needs. Uh, she's been trying to figure out better study habits. It's just hard, Molly. So I wouldn't beat yourself up. Uh, you know, be 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 gentle on yourself because you know you, you're you're doing work and it's hard to do work when, as I, we said, in this situation you're in. Uh, spending a couple of day uh, nights uh, videos with me, I think, is a good way to close out the day, you know, you, you might get sick of me after you know, a couple of weeks of that, but, um, uh, um, I, yeah, you got to start doing some practice questions at some time, at some point, that's what I would add to that. At some point, you got to carve out some times, you got to start doing some practice questions. And then you're certainly going to have to take a practice test, maybe seven, 10 days out and see where you're at. I don't know if you told us what your score was. You don't have to remember in chat, you know, it's not private. So everybody can see your business, but I would I hope, Molly, that you didn't uh, really blow it. I would hope that you barely missed your mark because, uh, you know, that's going to be a little better than if you completely, you know, were in left field somewhere. Uh, sure, sure. So in a replay at 39, I'll just uh, 39. I either do it by time or I just put it out there. But I there's 266 uh, playlist pick six, and I will link to both of them. The, the first 66 playlist is lectures. And then the second playlist is practice exams and uh, practice questions. I'll link those both in the uh, replay. I could try and learn how to do it in the chat, but you know, it takes me a little. I'm not that quick on the on the chat thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, Molly. I don't think so. I think you know they used to go back and forth on things, and now they just they just once they do it, they say we're not going to you know go back and forth. Yeah, thanks, Cynthia. Please do. I want to. 
I want to clean up all those uh, coaching calls I owe people because I don't want to have them lingering. So I want to get that done. I also want to get it done because I'm thinking about going a little bit dark here in the fourth quarter because I told you I'm trying to get that that cabin built. And so, uh, you know, that would be the other reason. Uh, latch me. I hope I'm getting right. Latch me. Did you get my videos I sent you? I sent you the two videos on the questions you had. Uh, they, I, you should have got the links. I think it was you. So uh, I think I sent you two videos, but uh, check your email. Uh, I get some people don't use their real email when they're communicating with me. And, you know, make sure if it's like something you want to help on or something, you're using an email that you check every now and again. But anyways, uh, I sent you, I think, a link to the questions you had. Hey, there's my GG. I, I, I mean, my GG from class, GG. We had another GG in here. I don't know if she's still here. And I thought it was you. And, uh, you know, it was uh, some other GG. How many GGs are there? I wouldn't think that's a common name. Anyways, hello, Dean. GG is in my 65 class today. I told you she's killing it in the chat. Can you talk about capital gains? Well, we talked a little bit about that today in carryover losses. I certainly can. So as we discussed in a class today, on your tax return, there are three areas that you report on. You report on your earned income, paycheck income, right? What you make, you know, working for money. You know, I think of that as W-2, 1099, you know, me teaching the class today. That's going to be, you know, earned income. We don't really care about an earned income, but let's say Dean's earned income. Dean working for money is uh, 90 grand. The second area uh, that I report on my tax return, this is the one we do care about for all exams, is portfolio or unearned income. You know, what I do in my investments, right? So, you know, watching my stocks go up and down is not taxable, but buying and selling is. And so at the end of the year, you know, I net up all my gains and losses. The investments where I had losses, you know, what I do is compare my cost basis to the sales proceeds, and that's either a gain or a loss. I net those numbers, right? As we said, uh, chat is open. Maybe you guys can help out uh, Gigi as well. So I just told you the Dean's uh, paycheck income is 90 grand. And so let's say in my portfolio, when I net the gains and losses, I lost $20,000. So does Dean get to report an adjusted gross income? Because I'm going to adjust that 90 grand. Do I get to say 70? I say, well, I made 90, but I lost 20 in my portfolio. So I made 70 and that's what I owe taxes on. Or do I get to say I made 87? In other words, I take three of my 20 and I adjust that. It's the $3,000. So how do you get your net gain or loss? You just net up all your transactions over the year of the stocks you bought and sold, right? And so again, it's not a taxable event if you don't buy or sell, right? So I have securities I bought and sold. I've closed those positions out. I net that. That number is either a positive number or it's a negative number. So that's how I get the net gain or loss. I will show you uh, uh, that tomorrow in class. Just show up early. And I'll pull a pull a, a slide for us, Gigi, where we can do that in class tomorrow before everybody gets there. Show you some numbers. Oh man, well you know me, I'm gonna give you a hard time. I like people to have test dates, so please get a test date. Please get a test date. Get one you're comfortable with, but you know your brain will do better when you get a test date because it'll start drawing you to it. Damn, failed the 66, 7, 69. Man, damn. Did great on all the sections, but got 2745 on laws and regulation. Now my boss is having to take the 63. Well, I can see why I would do that because at least with the 63, uh, you are an agent of the broker dealer and you can conduct business on the BD side. You can't conduct business on the investment advisory side, uh, but it's that same section again. So uh, I would go to the channel. I'll link to my 63 playlist. I have a great, great video. And what I try to do, the 63 steel plays, uh, I teach that as a four hour class. And it's a 63 class. I thought, I wonder if I could cram the four hours into 90 minutes. And so I have a video that I'll uh, put in the link called The Mighty 90. It's The Mighty 90. And what I did was put the four-hour class into a 90-minute video. So I would highly recommend you watch that. I don't want you to risk your career, but I do believe you could watch that video, uh, you know, two hours before the test and you could go past the test. Uh, I'm not suggesting you do that, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it's cram full of good stuff. Uh, there's also a couple of 63 practice exams. When you start doing your practice questions, practice exams, 
I think you'll be very comfortable because it's the same stuff basically. But make sure you do lots of practice questions. I don't know when he's taking you have the 63. If I were your boss, I'd make you take it in a couple of weeks from now. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to get that 63 done. Uh, you missed the Monday live class. We'll attend uh, Wednesday. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, there you go. So, yeah, we're going to be, be there tomorrow. 65. Well, we're sending you good test vibes, Joshua. Sending you good test vibes. You are welcome. Uh, for content, the uh, SIE 2020 book. Uh, was yeah the RMD is definitely 73 now. It is definitely 73, Logan. And that's how you should answer. So uh, I'm not sure why that's not on your dashboard. It should be. I will certainly bring it up to uh, Kaplan. Uh, but yeah, that definitely is now 73, and I should answer accordingly. Very very testable. So the biggest testable distinction. Uh, 45, 53. Uh, I'm going to link uh, to a video that's just that. All it is is a closed end versus open end. And uh, it is very testable on every exam. So it doesn't matter whether you're taking the SIE, the 7, the 65, the 66. It is very testable to be able to distinguish how open-end funds are different from closed-end funds. So here we go. Open-end funds are continually offering new shares to the public. And since they're continually offering new shares to the public, they not only have to comply with the Investment Company Act of 1940, they're further going to have to comply with the Securities Exchange Act of 33, the Prospectus or Paper Act. Right. Open end funds are only allowed to issue one class of equity. In other words, they're only allowed to get people involved in a common stock share. They're not allowed to issue preferred stock. They're not allowed to issue bonds. Now, be careful. I didn't say they can't own preferred stock. They can't. I didn't say they can't own bonds. They can. I said they can't issue them. They can issue them. You're doing business directly in an open end fund with the fund. It's a primary transaction. The issuer of the mutual fund is receiving the proceeds. And when you redeem, you're doing business with the mutual fund as well. Open-end funds are always doing business based on the next calculation of the NAV. And that NAV has to be calculated once per business day. The NAV plus the sales charge equals the public offering price. Can't be more than 8.5%. Uh, the X date, since it's a primary transaction, the X date is typically the day after the record. Now, in a closed-end fund, they're going to do a one-time IPO, initial public offering. But then, very testable, closed-end funds are going to trade supply and demand. You know, MXF is the Mexico fund. That's a closed-end fund. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange like a stock. A that's the biggest testable distinction, by the way. Closed-end funds trade in the secondary market. Closed-end funds can issue preferred stock. So the Mexico fund chose to, they could issue preferred stock, promise the preferred stockholders of the Mexico fund 4%, take the money, make additional investments within Mexico. You know, if they wanted, they could issue Mexico fund debentures, take the proceeds, make additional investments within uh, Mexico. Closed-end funds do not, do not meet redemption requests. So my manager never has to worry about meeting a redemption request. And that, that's good because the Mexico market is uh, pretty volatile. We say, listen, if you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, then you need to you know, sell your shares to someone else for more than or less than you originally paid. So very, very testable. And I will uh, link in the replay to a video I have just on that. It's only about open end and closed end. I also cover that at all my mutual fund lectures, but... Uh, I have a particular video. I have a slide I really love. It's one of my all-time favorite slides. And on the left side of the slide, I've got all the terms and things you need about open end. And on the other, all the terms associated with closed. And that's a big, big time test fire. Uh, I saw your video on 65 Updates a few months ago. Have you gotten any feedback? I have. Nobody's seen anything uh, uh, based on the updates uh, on the test so far. 
which I told you, Joshua, was my, what I thought, that they would wait until they reload them and test them for validity before they actually started showing up. So uh, I haven't had anybody on feedback tell me they've got any of those uh, updates that I put in that video. Yeah, so jurisdiction is about, uh, well, it's the same again. So NASA exams are NASA exams. So as a retail investor, as a retail investor, I have two levels of protection. Now, on the federal level, the SEC protects me. I'm coming to you from Nevada. And Nevada has what's called a state administrator. And the state administrator uh, protects me as a retail investor in Nevada. Now, jurisdiction is about the template called the Uniform Securities Act and the power of the administrator. So, you know, does, again, I link Jackie to a video on called jurisdiction. It was somebody else who had a problem with this. I made a little video for him. Uh, but uh, does the a state administrator in Nevada have a jurisdiction on an offer that originated in Nevada? Uh, the answer is yes. Does the state administrator, let's say I'm uh, in Nevada and I uh, make an offer to a resident of California. So the offer originated in Nevada. It was directed into California. Does the state administrator of California have jurisdiction? The answer is yes. Now, now, within that context of jurisdiction, there are certain transactions that the state administrator doesn't have jurisdiction over. For example, uh, some of the uh, uh, transactions they don't have authority, don't have jurisdiction over, over is a bona fide lender liqu liquidating securities. So if I'm a lender and you pledge securities and I sell them, the state administrator has no jurisdiction over that transaction. If I uh, gift you, non-accessible securities, the state administrator has no jurisdiction over that transaction. If I'm uh, carrying out my legal duties as a trustee in bankruptcy and I uh, liquidate securities, the state administrator has no jurisdiction over that transaction. If I am a, um, a uh, sheriff and an asset forfeiture and I'm selling securities, uh, again, the state administrator has no jurisdiction. So if you're making low 70s and not my marks, I think you're fine. Uh, I will link Jackie to that video I have. It's, it's, it's called Jurisdiction. And uh, I'll link that for you. Watch that. I think that might be helpful to you. You capital Mometrics, I, it's, it's Susie or Suze, I guess, Suze. Um, I have Mometrics. They give me permission to put their stuff on my channel. I'm not as big a fan. I usually give them like a B. But it's free stuff, and it's a good price point. So I'm not really opposed to that. Kaplan is certainly much better. Uh, but yeah, Momentrix, I was going to do one of their 24s. I'm just afraid I'm going to hate it. And I would feel bad if they give me permission, and I hate it, and I have to say I hate it. <laughs> I'm a little fearful. Uh, but hey, you know, if you pass your SIE, that's what counts, right? Uh, I'm with you. I think a different voice. Don't get too many voices, but different voices are helpful. So again, if you have the resources, you can buy another vendor. Why not? You know, get a different uh, perspective on it. Get a different perspective on it. Uh, taking my 66 on Thursday, mid-80s. That's fantastic. Sydney, Capital Cubic, love it. Uh, used SDC for SIE in seven. Great. Uh, well, I think Kaplan Pratchett's questions are really good, particularly on the NASA exams. I told you, our, our, these, I still say R, even though I'm not a Kaplan guy. But um, subject matter expert Chuck Lundstein, he lives for this stuff. And uh, he's uh, really pretty good at uh, the NASA. So I think uh, I think Kaplan's good on all of it, but particularly on NASA exams, uh, Kaplan is very, very strong. Well, the always the riskiest strategy is a naked call. A naked or uncovered call is where you agree to stock you don't have, sell stock you don't have, and that is the only option position that has unlimited risk. You also have unlimited risk in a short straddle because a short straddle has, again, a naked call. So what options drives the riskiest while trading on a volatile market? It's going to be a short call, a naked or uncovered call, and it's going to be in a rising market, in a rising market. By the way, that's very testable though, that naked calls. If I come to your office and say, I want to lose so much money, then you in advance can't tell me how much. I always say, don't be a dumb bear. Don't be a dumb bear. Be a smart bear. You know, dumb bears short the stock without entering a buy stop or buying a protective call. 
So another way you can expose yourself to unlimited risk is sell stock you don't own. And the other way you can expose yourself to unlimited risk is a, you know, a green sell stock you don't own. There you go. There you go. Yeah, it's it's tough, Molly. We're with you. We're sending you good test vibes. It's tough. I mean, be good. I guess good news when you 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 know redeem yourself on this. I always tell people, and I mean this sincerely, when you have missed the mark and then you retest and you make it, you've actually passed two tests. The retake, and then I call it a test of resiliency. You know, that you got uh, in the face of adverse circumstances, you were resilient. And I truly believe this, Molly. It bodes well for your future in the securities industry. There are many, many, many very successful people who are not good test takers who eventually pass their tests and now have done very, very well for themselves and their family. So, you know, uh, just keep trying, try and stay motivated. Uh, do what you can do, you know, in that like an athletic event, leave it all out on the field, so to speak. You can only do what you can do, right? So, you know, uh, we, we talked about what you can do. Yeah, he's a good looking dog. I like, uh, I'm a big dog guy and I like bigger dogs. My my brother has a chihuahua and his name is Zofta. I mean, he's, you know, I like him, but, you know, I like a dog that, you know, doesn't squeak, you know, rough, you know, has a good, good bark to him. I've been thinking about getting a, another dog, but it's just like travel so much is tough. So mom and I were talking about when we're going to get a new dog. Do I do these for the 24? Gavin, uh, these are your wel welcome to answer any question from any exam in our live stream. So this live stream is for all FINRA and NASA exams. So if you do have a 24 question, just like anybody else taking any other exam, just put it in the, uh, the chat and I'm more than happy to try and help you with it. Army wife, husband deployed, working full time. Wow. And studying for a while there. Man, that's crazy. Uh, worst timing. Yep. But yeah. The one should do, it's a rite of passage for everybody. So, you know, it's just one of those things. It's, you know, I joke and the Marines were the few, the proud, we don't want to be the many and the humble. So, you know, the idea of putting this, uh, you know, exam in front of people is to say, okay, well, do you really want to be in our business? Cause if so, here's what you're going to have to do. So, uh, by the way, Gigi, thank your husband for his service. We uh, appreciate it. And I should say your service too. It's, I know how difficult it is for spouses of uh, military folks as well. Uh, got a 66 on the first SIE uh, retake October 5th. I have to pass this time. Yeah, it's again, if you know a lot of firms, you don't make it, then that's kind of the end of the, the road. So yeah, uh, any tips to get those extra points, Stephanie? Yeah, um, we talked about working, just get, get past it. I think we talked about this last time on the live stream, get past it and get back to work. Uh, I think the way I would get back to work is uh, I would start with some reading, uh, whatever your manual is. Uh, I'm a big fan. I know it's not possible for everybody, but I would want you to read your uh, manual cover to cover and as close to one setting as possible. I know that's maybe not, you know, as possible as Dean would like it to be just to see what's between the covers. Right. And then at some point you're going to have to start taking practice exams again. So uh, 10, five, maybe seven, 10 days out. So what would that be like September? If I were your accountability partner on September 27th uh, or 8th, I would want to practice test score. And again, uh, hopefully you have a QBank available to you, whether it's STC, uh, whether it's not been past perfect. If not on the channel, we have a, a whole bunch of SIE practice exams. So I'd want to score. And then based on that score, that mark, uh, we would then have to decide how much remediation is still to be done. You know, ideally, we would like to be in the high 70s, like some of the people in the chat have been, where, you know, it's just rinse and repeat. They just got to stay the course and they got to stick the landing. So um, 66 means you, you want to overlearn everything. You want to bring everything above par. So the other thing I would do, Stephanie, is print out the PDF uh, from uh, FINRA on the content outline of the SIE. And I would do an intellectual inventory. So what I would do is I'd go through that and I'd use plus zero minus on this intellectual inventory. Plus means that you think you were above par, above passing on that particular area. Zero means at par, you think you were at the passing score in that area. And counterintuitive again, we're looking for minuses. A minus is something that you feel you were below passing score, below par, and you got your printout to help you on that, right? It met That printout you get when you fail matches up perfectly with this document. And then if it's a minus, then what we want to do is overlearn, get above par and everything that is a minus. And then we want to also 
bring above par everything that was par. That's what I mean by overlearning. And then lastly, we don't want to go backwards on the stuff we are above par. We want to review that just to make sure we don't slip in that area. So that would be my recommendation to you. Um, you're more than welcome. Uh, we're here every Tuesday. I know you're one of our Facebook folks, and uh, I don't mind uh, circling back with you uh, after you get started. And maybe you want to do a little check in or something. Uh, you know, uh, maybe we can do a little Zoom call or something. I won't charge you tutoring for that. We can just see where you're at and, uh, you know, come up with a, what you need to do to close, close this out strong. Okay. looks like we've been at it a little over an hour. Let's see what else I got. Uh, yeah, sometimes by yourself is pretty good, right? If, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're doing our three day. So next week I'm doing the 65, October 2nd through the 4th. I'm doing the SIE. Those are my Kaplan classes. You're welcome to join us on those. And again, if you do join us for a class, it's uh, Guru 15, you get 15% off. Yeah, I'm with you. I get it. I get it, guys. Well, standard deviation going to be tested is just definitional, Trish. Standard deviation is the variance. And so they're just going to show you various standard deviation numbers and ask you which is the less volatility. And it's that one with the smallest number. Uh, my friend Brian Lee, his uh, exam has a very good example of how they test on standard deviation. So if you go to the channel and you uh, find the 66 playlist test geek, I think it's like the first question out of the gate. It's a standard deviation question that I think is pretty spot on. So it's definitional. Uh, we will be talking about that. Uh, I know you're excited, Gigi, tomorrow. You're welcome. Let's see. We got anything else here? Time for our drawing. Let's see what happened to my computer here. I'm going to get my drawing thing out. Uh, why we can't invest in gold and IRA accounts? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not Congress. I'm not the IRS. So I think I'm the wrong guy to, to answer that question, Cups of Cala. Um, uh, you could get exposed to gold through ETFs, but, you know, it's a securities industry. So the securities industry wants you to put cash and buy securities. Uh, you can buy U.S. gold coins in your IRA. So, uh, again, it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you will only have 72 or 73 as an option. You'll never have both. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that, Gigi. Yeah, she's, she's referring to the class she's in. Uh, Gigi is in my class right now. I am in the, uh, we just finished our second day of a Series 66 class. And so I have co-branded classes with Kaplan. They're Series 7 Guru Kaplan classes. So she's in the second day of a 66 class. So on the Kaplan schedule, sometimes you will find me teaching a Kaplan class. So the, I'm doing the seven uh, the seven at Kaplan class, I can just tell you right now, I'm teaching the Kaplan Guru Series 7 class. Uh, that is going to be, I'll just find it for you. Uh, I'm teaching that October 23rd. I'm teaching the three-day Guru Kaplan Series 7 class. It's the 23rd through the 25th. And again, if you want to join me for that class, uh, Guru 15 is the discount code to do so. Well, I don't think you need to know what's a company with the official statement. You just need to know it's the prospectus-like document for selling muni bonds. And I don't think there's any question about what goes with an offering circular. It's just the test, the term. So uh, if you have a particular question, uh, send that to me by email. I'm more than happy to take a look at it. Yeah, Kaplan Live class is what GG's in. Okay, so uh, anybody have any ideas? Uh, what should be for our drawing? What word should we put into the chat? We'll answer why ETNs are open end. Yeah, I don't I don't know why they would have a fail to deliver because a fail to deliver would be on the broker dealer side. And so, you know, fail to deliver is about T plus two and delivering the broker dealer. So I, I would need more context for that. But that's not unique to ETFs. You know, securities, all securities can have fails to deliver. Okay, anybody got any ideas? Uh, uh, that's correct. Uh, that is correct. The only ones that are goofy are treasuries and options. I would add to that, James, options. All right, so let me get our giveaway tool here. And uh, choose the live stream. Q&A. Anybody uh, uh, have uh, Autumn? Is that I like that one. Is that, uh, Cynthia, your suggestion for the giveaway? Okay, let's put that in there. So uh, if you want to uh, participate in the drawing uh, for the coaching call, 
Now let me put it up on the screen here. Share screen. Boom. And let me put it on that. And let me get rid of uh, the clutter. Boom. And let me get rid of James. No, uh, no, no, just didn't clean that up. Uh, let me put my email up there. Remember, you have to claim it. So there's my email. All right. So uh, if you are interested in a 30 minute coaching call, uh, again, a coaching call is a good value because uh, tutoring is 225 an hour. So 30 minutes in a coaching call is what? $112.50 value. Uh, the, again, the coaching call could be on any FINRA exam. So I, we had somebody with 24, it could be a 24, it could be a nine, it could be a 10, whatever. Uh, I usually just ask what you would like to talk about. And then I send you uh, the uh, Zoom link and, uh, you know, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Again, the uh, the Zoom invite will be for this Thursday at uh, 1 p.m. Anybody else want to participate? We're up to 11 entries. All right, well, let's do the drawing. Cynthia, you already had one. Did you win yet last week? I don't think you did. We have a rule. I call it the Marcel rule because Marcel won two weeks in a row. So we don't allow you to win two weeks in a row. But I don't believe, Cynthia, I think you won like three weeks ago. And I just haven't been able to hook up with you to claim your coaching call. So uh, two things here, Cynthia. We're going to take care of this. I told you it's going to be Thursday. But in your case, since I already owe you one, uh, I think what we'll do, if you're uh, okay with it, we'll just make it an hour instead of 30 minutes. And uh, we'll do it at your convenience. And that will work for me if that uh, works for you. And I'll be looking for your uh, email. All right. So uh, anything else? Let me go back now. Let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of that. All right. Does anybody else have anything else for me before we call it a night? Thank you so much for joining us. I have a poll going on right now on the community page of the channel. It's about whether you would like to do this uh, two nights a week. And uh, if so, maybe we'll try it and see how, how much kind of how much uh, participation we get. But for right now, it's Tuesdays, uh, 5 p.m. Are REITs heavily tested? Uh, you need to know that a REIT, like a mutual fund, you buy it for professional management, diversification, ease of ownership. But it's a portfolio not of securities, it's a portfolio of real estate. And you need to know that they need to pass through at least 90% of their net investment income, very much like a mutual fund, right? They don't pass through losses. They just pass through uh, the income. Can I explain a calendar spread? I can, and I can link Frankie to an, a video on calendar spreads. A spread always means difference. Spread always means difference. So when you're spreading, you're doing long and short the same type of contract. So Frankie, pay attention. Lower, higher, longer. Lower, higher, longer. Lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums. Higher strike put contracts always have greater premiums. A calendar spread is when I'm going long and short different expirations. And so how do I determine whether it's a debit or credit? The longer term option, I'll link to a video called Spreads Missing Premiums. And it's a whole thing where I now tell you how to do this for missing premiums. But if I, I buy, for example, the September, or excuse me, I'll buy the Octobers, I sell the Decembers. That's going to be a credit calendar spread because I'm going to get more premium for the Decembers than I'm going to pay for the Novembers or vice versa, right? If I sell the Octobers and I buy the Decembers, that's going to be a debit spread because longer term option contracts always have greater premiums. So a calendar spread is when you're long and short, the same type of option, long a call, short a call. Same strike, different expirations. All right, anything else? Okay, well, like I say, remember, inch by inch, your exam is a cinch, yard by yard, your exam is hard. And I'll see you next Tuesday, same bad time, same bad channel, 5 p.m., Las Vegas time, baby.